What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting across from me this week and every week, he's the LeChuck to my guy brush. It's Desra. Hello, and sitting across from me, of course, is Brian Paul. And if you got that reference, I love you. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And every week on Why We Love PlayStation VR, we uh, dip into the PlayStation VR back catalog. Uh, we pick a game at random, not so random. We usually plan it ahead of time, so this doesn't go south at yeah. the last second. But well, that might be fun. Yeah, just like walk in and like, okay, you have 20 minutes to play this game. Go! Or how about just no no time to play the game. Oh, Talk yeah. about it for a half an hour. <laughs> that would be uh, good luck. Yeah. Uh, we dip into the PlayStation VR back catalog. We pick a game at random. Uh, we play the crap out of it. We see if it's been updated, patched, uh, if any DLCs come out for mm-hmm. it. Uh, we, we see how it's... How it's done over time. Yeah. How it's aged. How it's aged. Uh, so what game did we choose this week, Desiree? Today we're talking about Loading Loading Human Chapter 1. Chapter 1? Yes. Man, I can't wait till we get to Chapter 2. I can. <laughs> but yeah, um, so am. this was uh, released by Untold Games. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the developers, Untold Games, on October 13th, 2016. So That's a f- date familiar to most of you. That's yeah. uh, the launch of the PlayStation VR. Yeah, so we are dipping our toes back into uh, launch game territory. We had to make up for last week. We played the newest <laughs> game we possibly could last week. Uh, yeah, so we've done that before. This week, it's it's launch week time. Yeah. Uh, so the Loading Human came out at launch, priced at $40. I remember Blur. so clearly. Yes. Uh, Amazon. Uh, you got to remember, guys. You know, back... back before launch, no one had tried PlayStation VR. Right. We, we were all like throwing a bunch of money at something that we weren't really sure was going to be any good or not. And uh, and then it was like, well, what games do you want for this device that you're not sure if are going to be any good or not? Yeah. Uh, and so there I was. I was like, Drive Club, Amazon. I was <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> here they lie, uh, sure. PlayStation Store. Uh, and then and, and Loading Human was mm-hmm. like, they're like, here's your adventure game, Brian. Here's your here's your the update of a classic point-and-click VR adventure game. Yes, Mr. Threepwood lives again. Mr. See, Threepwood. I caught that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was curious. I, I had a feeling. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. <laughs> I, so, so I bought Loading Human at launch. I'm sorry. And I was like, and, and basically... Uh, my deal was, I was like, this is, this is great. This is, here's an adventure game. Here's something mm-hmm. that like, that it, it sounds like nothing else available for the PlayStation VR. That's very true. Yeah. And yeah. so, and it, it seemed like one of the few bigger games, like, you know, there was mm-hmm. a lot of shorter experiences and stuff, but uh, it seemed like the only real big adventure that was, that was going to be coming out. Yeah. And, and on the face of it, it looks pretty fantastic. A sci-fi universe and totally new uh, franchise, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, you know, cover art looks pretty interesting. Yeah. And, you know, they really push the the fact that you're, like, developing a relationship. That's the that's the big kind of selling point. It's like, yeah. you know, using the immersion to really be in there. Although, one thing I found in, in looking at some of the older, you know, promotional material and all that, they really stress about how great it is that you can reach in and pick things up in the world. Well, Let's uh let's let's drop into the Untold Games website for a moment. Okay. Uh, quote from their website: mm-hmm. is, Virtual reality has introduced for the first time the sense of presence. Yes. We are convinced that this new medium will be able to merge the interactivity of video games with cinematic storytelling, mm-hmm. and put us all in the process of living stories like we never did before. We are here to tell those stories. End quote. A, a noble goal. A noble goal. Um, do you know that this game was kickstarted? I did know that. Unbelievable! I, yeah. I had never heard anything about this. They had a thirty thousand dollar goal. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it cost them way more than thirty thousand dollars to make a game, but you know, this was to get them started. I'm guessing this was back in I think 2015, 2016. Yeah, and, and not only that, that first version um, was a slightly different story. Yeah, uh, it was basically a man uh, suffering from Alzheimer's trying to rekindle the memories of his relationship with his wife. Interesting through VR. I want to yeah. play that game. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I, I found um, in doing my research for this, I was reading some other reviews. I was like, "Oh, this reviewer here never played the actual release version," because in their review they were talking about all these story beats. I'm like, "No, no, no, those didn't happen." Oh, my oh God. this was the original, the Kickstarter version when it was first announced. Wow. And then maybe they played that first demo version, and then once the actual release version came out, they just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, it got kickstarted. Forty yeah. thousand uh, forty thousand seventy eight dollars of of the uh, of the one right. in thirty thousand. I mean, that was That's above and bad. beyond. Right. An extra thirty three percent. Now, Math. I mean, off the top of my head, it's probably <laughs> somewhat different than that. 
so, I mean, being the first, being a launch title, mm -hmm. it's never easy. No, that's true. Especially for a device like PlayStation VR where there's a lot of unknowns. Yes. And one of the many unknowns of PlayStation VR was was the locomotion system, how you're going to move ah, around. Or it's also, there. Okay. motion sickness, that the yes. whole thing. You know, and I'm and I know that some developers are were totally scared of motion sickness mm -hmm. and people who made Drive Club obviously weren't. Right. Right. <laughs> um I love you guys. I wish you were still around. So so loading human gives us this like kind of a mega tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and the whole tutorial is explaining the the movement system, the locomotion. Right. And and that that's definitely something like we've, you know, looking back on it now, we've seen a lot of different movement techniques and it seems like most developers have kind of settled on a few common solutions. Sure. This was like I said, the the Wild West very early days. And so the locomotion system is pretty unique and takes a little getting used to 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 be kind. Yeah. <laughs> so you can use the DualShock 4. Yes. And that makes the whole movement system easier. But it really detracts from the interactivity. Yep. So Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so, in fact, the fact the fact that it takes a lot longer to learn the, to, using the two move controllers uh, and the fact that even after four or five hours with this game, mm -hmm. I was still accidentally turning. Uh, yeah. I still recommend the move controllers over the DualShock 4 just for the immersion factor alone. So you can reach out and pick things up and, and, and interact with the world yeah. in that way. But so why was I why was I accidentally turning when I just wanted to walk down the hallway, Des? Well, because <laughs> so you move forward by pointing the controllers forward mm -hmm. and you turn by turning the controller, except when you also turn by looking turning your head while you walk the move button does everything yeah the move button if you want to if you want to crouch you point the, the move controller down oh and God. you hit the move button if you want to stand back up you stand it up push it up you want to turn around put it behind you click the button you want to walk backwards put it behind you and hold the button you want to walk forward just hold the button down you want to turn move the turn the controller hit the button that move controller that move button on the controller is doing like forty thousand things yeah, but the problem is it doesn't always do them though <laughs> like like crouching i had the hardest time like okay so point down and hit the button no okay point down and hit the button All right, point down and hit the button okay maybe I'm, I'm doing this wrong go online look it up no point down and, oh okay now it works yeah great were you? Yeah. Let me ask you this: Were you sitting or standing? Uh, I did both. Okay. Because I was like, okay, maybe it's me. Maybe it's the. Yeah. Maybe it's my position. It's just yeah. So this is probably the third or fourth time I've I've tried to spend serious time with this game, mm -hmm. and this time when I played through pretty much from beginning to end in one in one swoop. Okay. About four and a half five hours, standing yeah. the whole time. Oh wow! Yeah. And and I will say that for the first time, I had no issues with the movement. I mean, I was accidentally turning here and there. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> the tape just came up. Okay. Um, I was accidentally turning here and there, but for, I mean, yeah. but you know, I pointed down and I crouch. I pointed up, and luckily, you don't have to crouch very often, unless you drop something. Unless you drop something, <laughs> yeah. Well, then you're screwed. Yeah. And I'll say, I mean, honestly, once you, we're making it sound worse than it is, once you get used to it, it's the the locomotion system isn't that bad. No, actually, it's actually. It's horrible, and then once you get used to it, it's fine. Okay, so that's I'm true. totally agreeing with you. Yeah, but but just be warned that if you decide to play this yeah. game, you're in for you're in for you. Were, we were talking earlier that there's one of the first rooms you're in. Mm -hmm. There's like a, a oh, half there's a, spiral, spiral staircase. Oh my god, that staircase! The, the, the staircase literally doesn't <sighs> even do like a full 180. It it, nope. it just kind of curves up and to the right. So it's maybe a, in total a 90 degree turn. Yeah, my my first time playing this, it took me two and a half to three minutes to go up the stairs. <laughs> and, and to be fair, it, yeah. it, I think that's how long it took me the first time, too. Right. And that's not even taking into account the fact that your character moves at a glacially slow pace the that, entire game. That is another issue, for sure. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I didn't have a huge issue with it because of the style of game it was. Uh, because you're, it's a game where you do, you take your time and you look around, you're trying to find things. And for the most part, you're you're seldom you are it does happen quite a few times but mm. for the most part you're just walking around the room you know picking things up and doing things and then you're like okay off to the next room to go pick up things and do things yeah but every so often you are sent on these on these little missions where there's just nothing to do for long stretches and you're just walking ever so slowly in one direction going man i really wish there was a run button yeah this this is a game where i was actually able to explain to my son what padding meant yeah as far as the game you know it's 
sure it's four yeah four hours long let's say mm. i would say of if you actually count the times that you're doing something that a normal human being would call a game you can cut that down to an hour <laughs> a good chunk of it is just the oh you know you said okay well yes you have to do these things but you know, one of them, not spoiling anything, is you have to make some tea. Yeah. Okay. And you have to get the leaves for the tea. Sure. And you have to figure out where the leaves are. <laughs> you're, okay. you're like, sure. sure because why not? in the future, in two in two thousand fifty, <laughs> well, yeah. we're still picking leaves for, for tea. Well, sure. That's why? what we're doing in the future. Hey, well, you know, the real the real hipster ish future <laughs> sure, people. Sure. Yeah. But it's just like, okay, it's over here. The other one's over here. So I just have to sit there and walk all that distance. Yeah. It's it's not it's not a matter of like look if it's taking me a long time to figure something out let's go back to like static if I'm sitting there I'm banging my head against the puzzle it's taking forever because I haven't figured out the solution that's great if I know exactly what I need to do and the game just forces me to make it take ten minutes just because of how I have to walk back and forth that's not great and and of course the other part of this is is not only do you have to every so often walk long distances mm-hmm. but if you don't know where you're walking right it, it can be it can be mind numbing you're like you're like man it's taking me forever to get over here and then you realize it reminded me of my my first few minutes with faded the silent oath because <laughs> i would go down those long long like pathways yeah. to find out that it's nothing but an invisible wall at the end of it yeah. turn around and have to walk all the way back a very similar situation here mm-hmm. because you're like you're looking for a specific item and there wherein i think even more than like the motion contr- than the uh, than the control scheme, is my biggest problem with this game. Too often, you're tasked to do something and not told exactly how to do it. Yeah. Which and what I mean by that is, of course, you know, like in, just like life, you're not told exactly how to do things. Well, sure. But, but, for example, there's an early early on in the game, mm-hmm. you're talking to your father. Your father yes. has uh, has uh, basically beckoned you to come Dorian. and and and. And work at his research facility mm-hmm. to discover what is it the the, the quintessence. It's an energy source that'll keep your dad alive forever. So you reverse the aging process, right? And so and that's why you're there. And so there's one point you're talking to him, and he goes, "Oh, go grab the coordinates. They're on my desk." And I looked around and I was like, "There are oh seven God. desks in this yeah. room." And I walked all around the room, nice and slow, mm-hmm. checking out every single desk. And you, there's like a hint button. Yep. It'll repeat the last thing somebody said, or or your character's narration will repeat. Mm-hmm. Like you're like oh, just uh, you know, you, my, my 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 coordinates are somewhere in my desk. Yeah. And so I heard that a hundred times because I kept hitting the hint button, and that's all they gave me. And after I searched seven desks, I realized that this dude's desk wasn't even in the room I was in. Nope, it was across the hall. And that's not a spoiler. It's saving you some trouble. I yeah. guarantee you. And and, and the fact I walked in there, I was like, well, obviously it's right here now that I'm here. <laughs> but I just spent the last half hour walking around the room. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think in that talk about padding, that's I, I more so than even the slow motion. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, that's where I that's where my game got padded today. Yeah. And another tip, um, and again, not a spoiler, a tip, uh, just save you in this the whole team making thing. Again, I keep harping on this because I think this is just that whole phase is so emblematic of everything else that's wrong with the game. Um, you don't actually have to make the tea. You collect the leaves. Oh, this is this. You is, put them into a box. I want to. I want to smash. And then, somebody. so I've got this box of the tea powder, and I'm walking around the kitchen. Okay, well, I, there's obviously a teapot here. Yep. There's a way to get water. Yeah. And I'm just trying to smash these things. To, I mean, literally, just you're you're told to, 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 to make tea. Yes. And you don't actually have to do it. No, you you make the tea powder and then you go hand it to uh, uh, Alice. Yep. Okay. And there's one puzzle I still didn't figure out, and it, and it just the game eventually just moved on without me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> That's cool. Great. Yeah, it was it was like yeah. go ask Alice to turn this up, and I was like, well, I, okay, I'll go find Alice. Was like, right, yeah. Okay, and I came back, and the game just didn't didn't ask me to continue. And just to go back to the, the mechanics thing, there's one last thing. That, so all of this like having to manipulate the object. There are times where you you're sure your hand is on the object, yeah. and but you can't actually interact with it. Then I realized um, it's not based on where your hands are; it's based on how far away you are from the object you're supposed to interact with. Yeah. So if you're like, okay, say I have long arms, if my torso is too far away, but I can reach it, and even my the avatar of my hand in the game can reach the object, the game says no. You are not close enough. You have to move your character's body close enough, and then you can actually reach it. So you find yourself reaching through walls, and it's, yeah, it's... 
Yeah, I, I, I feel like, so again, this is the third or fourth time I've tried to spend time with this game. Mm-hmm. And I definitely had a whole lot more problems the first couple times I played this. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, like, my brain... You know, finally, it was like, okay, this is how the game wants me to play it. And so, uh, by my fourth, it's beating you into submission. By my fourth time, I'm finally like, okay, I, I get it. I get yeah. what you're trying to make me do. And uh, and and eventually, eventually, it does kind of like become second nature. You know, you'll struggle with things here and there, but for the most part, you get used to it. Now, what about everything else in this game? What about the? <laughs> we talked about control for like the last yeah. twenty minutes. What about the AV? What about the audio video? Audio, yeah, that's what uh, yeah so it's it's weird there are some environments that are really nicely detailed and put together you know the apartment you first and uh, first start off in yep um you know uh, uh even i'd say dorian's lab and maybe even the kitchen are, are really interesting you know well detailed sets a lot of things you can go up and and look at and examine uh but then there are some like the the greenhouse which are just practically big empty space yeah, the green, the greenhouse for me was sort of for me it wasn't it wasn't bad. Mm. I, I walked in and I did get the sense of you know I've been trapped in these little hallways and stuff and, and rooms with kind of low ceilings and then the door opens to to the greenhouse and it's like and I'm like hey, oh, okay you know like it's I get it you, you gave me the sense of like I'm in a big room. But I could just see the copying and pasting of the textures on the trees. There's That's, also that yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and but but overall, I guess I do have to say that overall, I think this game looks pretty damn good for a launch title. It, it, yeah, there's there's this re- strange blend. I'm I'm gonna say it, it shoots for some kind of blend between CG and realism, right? It's not yeah. a cartoon. No, it's no. they go for they go for a realistic look, and it kind of comes off being a little bit stiff in CG. Right, and I do like the the, the design, like their vision of the future here, the way the technology works. Sure, it's it's, it's a nice. I mean, it's definitely a statement of the way they think the future is going to look, and that looks great. Why does everyone's cell phones look like they're from cell phones from five years ago? Well, yeah, but that's <laughs> <laughs> just just curious. But where it all breaks down is with animation, and and yeah, the, the, the the characters. Um, you know, we we talked. Uh, seems like ages ago now about summer lesson yep. and how they made the deliberate call to make the character not exactly realistic but not exactly cartoony they went more on the the cartoon end of the uncanny valley sure and that was a good call yeah oh, absolutely um and you, you you were able to the the person felt more real than she would have i can't um i can't remember, i can't remember her name i'm so sorry yeah it's on the tip of my tongue <clears throat> uh but anyways uh this game tried to get more photo real type characters and they landed smack in the middle of the uncanny valley yeah um you know alice this girl you're supposed to be falling in love with just looks like someone who's got like facial issues um it's yeah i don't i, I didn't think she looked that bad <clears throat> okay um, it, they they do it, the, the trouble is is when they try to like add the romance to the plot oh. and you're like I, I i i don't i don't know how i feel about you know going in for a kiss with this girl yeah and that's like that is a weird moment. I I, I, I was maybe really uncomfortable. I was super uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'm actually supposed to lean in and like right. and, 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 and and you know. Right. Am I gonna clip and then just you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm and I'm still not sure. Now that the scene is over, I'm still not really sure because everything got right. real bright, and I was like, is that gonna happen either way? Yeah. Uh, it's very very strange. Um. It's, yeah. I don't know. And as far as like the. the the creators and, and all the, the, the press material you can read about this, they were just going on and on about, like, this is going to be this simulator of, of being in a relationship and falling in love and all this. But at the end of the day, just be it the writing or the animation or whatever, I'm not particularly interested in any of the characters. I don't really feel any connection with, with Alice. And it just feels like you're these two characters are falling in love because the writer decided, okay, bang, you're in love. Yeah, you know. the, when you, when you, does the, suddenly this when there's suddenly and I do say suddenly mm. because it is very sudden when there's suddenly finally an attraction, it, it seems like wait was this the right moment for that? Yeah. And again, I can understand that like if you look a step back, the game is supposed to be told from the point of view of flashbacks. Yeah, this is you know your character who obnoxiously is named Prometheus. We haven't even gotten to that part yet. Um, I think you just covered it. Yeah, he's reliving these moments in the past Mm -hmm. and that would be great and you could see just like okay you know like Annie Hall one of the best movies of all time is told exactly like this it's a bunch of flashbacks from his relationship 
and you don't have to like you know follow every moment along to see how they fell in love but you just in the moments you spend with the two characters you see like wow, what kind of people they are and what kind of attraction and why they had an attraction this do, do you think the voice acting is to blame for this i think prometheus sound more bored narrating the game than i did playing the game is that possible <sighs> yeah no the voice acting is not great so there's a, there's a weird uninterested sound mm -hmm. definitely a somber tone to yep. the entire game and, yeah. it's, it's, and it's not just the voice acting um, it's, they do seem very disinterested in what's going on around them they seem very uninterested in each other but mm -hmm. on top of that there's this the music selection for this game you can there there are there's like vinyl records <laughs> there everywhere are. there are and you can just go at any point and uh, and just put a record on mm -hmm. on, on on this super old was it a gramophone like, yeah no it's 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 honestly good this record player yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh and in, in in all of the music choices I don't know if these are real bands or if these these were recorded for uh for yeah. the for the game I'd never heard of any of these bands before but they're all kind of right up my alley mm -hmm. um because they're all like kind of like you know sad somber sappy right. Uh, and, and I gotta say, it fits the tone of the game. Like the, yeah. everybody's kind of like melancholy, and so's the music. And it's got this soundtrack that fits perfectly with 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 the disinterested uh, right. voice acting. Yeah, and I think because of that, like I I don't I know maybe I'm just a cynical. You know, I've been wounded by pop culture too much, but like no, nothing in it was particularly a surprise. Okay, no, there's no. you know the the guy you think is the bad guy, he's a bad guy. You know, <laughs> the person who you think has a secret has a secret. You know, it's not really, um, yeah. And, and the but the tone of the music definitely sets. It's like, oh, okay, everything. You know, you start out the game, huh? Everything's gone to hell. Okay, so then it rewinds you where everything's awesome and great. And like, oh, yeah. Well, I know everything's going to go to hell. Um, also, every yeah. time it rewinds or or goes to another time, yeah. It, it's like the longest load screen ever. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, luckily these they're fewer and far between, right? You, like the right. while you're playing the game, like you you have these big moments, these big memories that you're reliving, mm -hmm. and you know they can go on for like a half an hour, maybe longer at a time. Yeah. And then there's a loading screen, and it's just like it seems like the loading screen is just as long. And I'm I'm willing to cut them some slack. This is actually an Italian developer. Okay. Um. So and it, there's some there's some translation issues the here Italians and there. Italians so. like the long load times. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that must be it. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a well known stereotype. Yeah. Um. But but also it's a launch game. I guess I'll cut him some slack on that end. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but <laughs> as far as like the character building and the narration and things like that, maybe there's some kind of cultural disconnect that we're not getting. Maybe, maybe. There, you know. So I'm gonna. All right, we'll, we'll we'll catch you some slack on that, but that doesn't excuse like the voice acting, the pacing, the yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, I I actually have a lot more to say. Okay, but I want to say it after we give our rating. Interesting. All right. What would so, you rate this game? Uh, obviously, like let's inform some new viewers because we, yeah. we do have some. What is our rating scale? Uh, so number one is oh my god, you need to buy this game. If you have a PSVR, this is something you have to have in your library. Or on the flip side, you need to get a PSVR just so you can play this game. Uh, two is, yeah, it's okay. You know what? It's not going to hurt you. Um, if you get some extra money burning your hole in your pocket, sure, pick it up. If it's on sale, great. Uh, three is, do not buy this. Do not reward these people. Friends don't let friends buy crap. We are your friends. We're telling you, do not buy this crap. And I'm going to ask you, usually you ask me, Yeah. what would you rate this game? This is a solid definitive three. No um, questions about it. Hands down, don't buy this game. This is junk. There's nothing redeeming here. For, for me, yes. I think it's a game they had a lot of uh, ambition, mm -hmm. but they absolutely biffed in the execution. Um, and, and the things the things like the slow pace, the fact that your character walks so slowly, the fact that the puzzles are barely puzzles, they're just, you know, go get that thing. Okay, I got this thing. You know, um, it really... I want to say it really insults my intelligence as a gamer. It's, to me, you know... If they if they don't want it to be a game, then say right off the bat, this isn't a game. This is, like Invisible Hours says, hey, this is an experience you're, you're having. You know, this is a visual novel, I think they called it. Uh, call it that. But don't tell me this is an adventure game when it's not. 
you know, uh, we're, we're smarter than that at this point. So, yeah, I kind of, you guys annoyed me. All right. So yep. for me, uh -huh. I've had this game since launch. Yes. And having played it a few times up until now. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing is when we decided to do this episode, yeah. I was like, here's the game. I right. handed it off to Des. I was like, here, you can have my copy. I've got this covered. And just to refresh my memory, I went on YouTube. And I was like, let me check out, make sure, you know, see, see what scenes I've forgotten about. And, yeah. and and I was like, holy crap, I've only played the first 45 minutes of this game. <laughs> and it's like almost five hours long. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, holy crap, I can't believe it. Because because some of the, you know, the, not being able to find the coordinates on the desk. Mm -hmm. uh, these things took me a really long time the first time around. I was like, I, I you know, I didn't realize that I'd only seen maybe 20% of the game. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time with this game today and uh and, and I was after having maybe talked down about it for mm -hmm. for the last year and a half. Okay. I got to say and this is this is might be coming out of out of nowhere if you've been watching the rest of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. Okay. I really enjoyed it because I was like like I've never there was nothing like this at launch, and still, a year and a half later, there's still nothing like it on the platform. I'm not saying, you know, okay. that, like, just because it's different, it's good, but mm -hmm. I am saying, like, it offered something unique, and it gave me a feeling that I haven't really felt in VR before. And what that feeling was, was with with the somber music that I was really enjoying, like, every time I put a new record on the, mm -hmm. on, on the record player uh, and walked around, it was kind of like, you know... You got you would get further away from the record player, but it would still be back in the background. Okay. And you know my interactions with other people, the the dialogue that was going on on top other of person. it. Other person. The other person. <laughs> yep, this is true. Uh, it was it, it's it sort of like set this interesting tone for me. And and what I kept thinking about was actually one of our game cats, and that's Jay Dow. So shout out to Jay Dow. Okay. Uh, because Jay Dow yeah. bought Perfect, the vacation simulator. Oh, okay. When I told him how bad it was, he was like, that sounds like it's right up my alley. <laughs> and and I got to say that there were moments in Loading Human that felt, that gave me that feeling of isolation, that gave me this feeling of being somewhere else. That I was like, this is doing what Perfect set out to do, but like in an adventure game setting. And even though like almost everything, everything you're tasked to do mm -hmm. is pretty inconsequential. Yeah. When you when you first start the game, you're in like your apartment, the loft, right? And there's just stuff everywhere, and it, and it felt like the developers were like, they knew way ahead of me playing this game that the greatest thing to do in VR is to pick things up and throw them. And yeah, there are a lot of that. so many <laughs> things to just you can just spend you can spend an hour in this loft and go yeah. around. And if you really want to get invested in this world, there are things to read. There are there are, there are things to pick up, and, and if you look at them, your character will tell you a little bit about where this uh, object came from sure and and even like you walk into the bathroom and they, they it seems like shaving is an option but as we found out you have to shave before yes. they even let you back out of the room <laughs> um but it's but it's all those things where like these are little little touches it's like you pick up mm -hmm. like little you know piece, like a lipstick or something that's obviously not yours yeah but like you hear a little bit about it and like where it came from and 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 it sort of starts filling in the backstory in ways that the rest of the game doesn't. Yeah, and I, I can see that, but I think that that can be done so much better than this game did. I agree. You know, um, either, like, hey, talk about Guybrush, Guybrush Threepwood, talk about Sam and Max, your classic LucasArts adventure games. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted that to be this. Now, it doesn't have to have the sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying like, hey, this wasn't funny, so it sucks. Right. Um, but... There's a way to, to build in those details without feeling just so forced and flat. You know, I, I guess maybe what, what you're reading is, you know, getting a, the feeling of the alienation he's experiencing. I guess it's that, but to me, it just feels emotionally empty, not because the character is drained and I'm feeling his ennui, but because it's just they just didn't pull off what they were trying to. I don't know. And, and, I, and I'm really not trying to dispute, yeah. like, you know, like, I, I, th I think we both, we had two very different experiences yeah. with this game. And, like, I don't, I, I'm not, I can't compare it to, to, to classic point-and-click adventure games. Okay. Because those were, I mean, in my book, almost flawless to a degree. Like, they were just so well-crafted. Yeah. But, but this put me inside of somebody's adventure. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if you're, if, 
when I was finally willing to spend the time with it, unlike apparently every time I tried to play it before, <laughs> I was like, there's something here, and, and which doesn't make it a one by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But at $40 when it launched, that was mm-hmm. definitely made it even less appealing. You know, and when and when you when you play this game for the first time, and, and the controls are just so kind of janky off the bat. Yeah. You know, until you get used to them, it, it makes it even less appealing. So here we are, a year and a half later, and I got to say that after five hours with loading human, I kind of enjoyed it, and and that means that if it's on sale for like I'm going to say around the fifteen dollar price mark, okay, then I'm going to recommend this one if you know what you're getting into. There's no action here. Not yeah. really. You know, there's, there's a couple scenes that things get tense, but there's no action. You know, there's a, you, you do occasionally shoot things. Not occasionally. Once. once. Yeah. Yep. There, there are some mini games which are you're training for your space mission. And sort of like shoehorned in. Like yeah. they, see, they seem very, very out of place. But there's not a lot here for, for the... For the casual gamer, mm-hmm. if you're an adventure gamer, if you love adventure games and you don't mind the somber mood, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I can't. I, 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 I gotta, I gotta give this one a little bit of an endorsement, okay? Because there's more here than I thought there was. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind the mood. I, I don't want to come up. You know, I, I, I love them. Honestly, I'd rather play Here They Lie. Um, I would too. Yeah, I, I think that does a better job of capturing the emotional state by actually capturing it. This one, I think, you know, there's a, a great rule in writing is show, don't tell. Yep. This game tells. <laughs> oh, it tells a lot. Yeah. Your character is alienated and he's depressed, you know, instead of making you feel that, um, which is hard. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying I could do it. I mean, that's why I'm here behind the mic, you know, talking about someone else is doing this. Um one one thing I do want to point, uh, talk about though before we wrap it up, yeah. this is chapter one, <sighs> and there have been no actual updates on whether two or three or anything are coming up. The closest I could find is on the Maximum Games Twitter page, uh, replying to someone else who had just done a review recently, okay. which is interesting. Uh, on March uh, March fifteenth, glad to hear you enjoyed the game. Unfortunately, we have no new information to share at this time. Keep yeah. following for updates. Now, I also want to point out that comment there was the first thing that Maximum Games had said on their page in about six months. Yeah, it's not promising. No. Yeah. So, I'm not. I'm not desperately hoping for Chapter Two. I'm not giving this game a two, hoping that Chapter Two is on its way. I'm saying as a self-contained game, uh, if you if you don't mind the four or five hours it'll take you, uh, and you don't mind stumbling through quite a bit yeah. of it. Uh, I yeah, it's a two for me. Well, well, here's here's the interesting. So I'm gonna flip it on Brian this one last time. Right. I want a chapter two. Yeah, I do because they were ambitious. There is a lot to like there. I do like the basic beats of the plot. I think there's a lot of good ideas here. I think where they biffed is the execution. Yeah, and I think a year, two years out. We've learned so much about VR. We've learned so much about interacting with the universe. We've learned what things work and what things don't. If they can take those lessons and apply it to this yeah. and just say, you know what? Loading Human 1 was just our prequel. It was just our, our figuring things out. And here's the real game. I'll be the first one in line to buy it. Excellent. So Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not desperate for Chapter 2, but if it comes around, I mean, by all means, yeah. I'll, I'll, I definitely want to see what they, what these guys have to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, their, their mission statement... Uh, is noble, and, yeah. and I'm and I'm totally behind them to if, if they want to give it another shot. For of sure, course, I think they might have gotten distracted by it. There's a, a third little tab that says business. Oh yeah, Did you see that? I, I didn't click it. It was if you want to contact us for setting up VR experiences for your business, that's what they're doing. Yeah, hmm. interesting. <laughs> All right. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. What did you guys think of Loading Human? Tell us in the comments below. I'm really curious to know because this one, uh, even though you and I aren't that far off. I think we we agree with a lot of the faults that the game has, mm-hmm. but we just kind of differ in our final verdict of it. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think? I'd love to know like what the... I, I, I'm going to say they're, most of them are going to side with you. <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it's generally a, a fairly hated game. Yeah, I, I think it's just the faults. I, I guess the question is, do the good things outweigh the faults? You know, and for, for, some, <laughs> for some of us, yeah... Yeah, and that's what I'm brothers. saying. Like you know, if they can just fix all those faults, yeah. there's there's some, there is a nugget of joy in there. But, yeah. Is that does nugget of joy? Um, I was I was trying to say diamond in the rough, but yeah. somehow it kind of 
got weirdly translated. Also, what games do you want us to talk about yes. and why we love PSVR? Uh, we've we've always got a couple, uh, you know, lined up, but we're always uh, very curious to know. This was this was one of them. This was a recommendation. Yeah, this was people have been asking for this for quite a while. Since so day one, I think. You're welcome. Yeah, you are indeed. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, that pretty much does it. So uh, for another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Desra, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.